I want to talk about the 2006 season. Uh, that was Chris Peterson's first year as head coach. Uh, you guys go 13 and 0, and then uh, we're going to fast forward to the 2007 Fiesta Bowl overtime against Oklahoma. Um, what do you remember the most about uh, a particular play in OT? We had this play, you know, mid year. We used it against the University of Idaho, and we knew we had something great and we had statue um we we ran it from my freshman year you know ryan did when he ran it but it was always you know you're taking a little drop you got the ball in both hands and you're almost like it's almost like a pump fake like to a double move or ball fake and then hand it off it was never the ball handling that we we had worked on and that we ran during that play um but about halfway through the year third through the year, um, <clears throat> Nick Lomax, if you remember that name, it's a football name. Neil Lomax was, he was actually with the Arizona Cardinals as their quarterback for several years. So Nick Lomax is, is his son, big six foot eight kid from Portland, Oregon. Hands like, his hands were like this big. And he was out the ball one day. He's like, hey guys, what if we did this? And he, he did the ball handling. Like you just keep it in the left hand, you fake with an empty right. And I remember Harson, who was a little coordinator, um, who's now the head coach with the University of Auburn. He was like, wow, that's that's pretty good. And Coach Pete seen it, and he was like, whoa, I like that. And they looked at me and said, Z, can you do that? I was like, oh, if Nick can do it, I can do it. So uh, we worked on it, and we ran that play, Colin, I'm not lying. We ran that play 50 times uh, throughout the year in practice. Typically, you run a play twice. You get the scout team two times. The third time, they'd see a set. They'd see a motion. And, you know, you're running a play that's preparing for that week. And they'd be like, they'd be on it. And pretty smart scout team. That was one of the advantages that we had over achievers, pretty intellectual guys. So they'd see it and they'd be like, ah, blah, blah, blah. Here, the balls come over here. You know, <clears throat> these guys never figured that play out. We'd get it every So we knew we had something great. We ran it against the University of Idaho. I think it was week six or seven. We'd schemed a formation in a particular uh, personnel formation matchup that we thought Idaho would do with receivers and a tight end backside. And they busted their coverage. They didn't send a corner over. And they had a guy kind of fall into it. <clears throat> well, when we ran it in the game, there was a couple different things that we wanted to do. We were going to run it early in the game. And thank God we didn't call it. But ran some, some what we call quick screens um, or wide screens. And the wide screen was where you have a three receiver set and then the, the it, receiver's account goes from outside in. So the outside receiver is one, two, and then three. Well, three, your inside receiver would run a little bubble screen. So he'd run a wide and you'd throw it to him. Well, <clears throat> when we would break the huddle with the receivers coming out of the huddle quick, we called it on hurry up. When they'd break the huddle, everybody's eyes on the defense would go, there's something coming out here to these receivers. Because typically we would, we'd break them out, get the line scrimmage, throw a screen or throw, you know, do something quick. <clears throat> so we didn't have that in that play call, but on the sideline, when we were calling it, we said, hey, let's break the huddle quick with hurry up. I said, you know, I coached him up and said, hey, you know, we'd seen this earlier in the game. So we schemed it and said, you know, let's get as much attention out there as we can. Uh, so sure enough, we get the play call. We knew from the previous possession, Adrian Peterson going one play, 25 yards, touchdown, that our defense was soaked. Like, they were zapped. They, they were tired. They fought for four-plus quarters. But that was a little telling. It took us about – I think it took us six plays or seven plays to get in the end zone. And we had to get in the end zone on a fourth down on a halfback pass, if you remember that. So we were like, hey, we're maxed out. Let's, let's pull out all the stops. Um, so we get up the line of scrimmage or get the play called in the huddle. We break early. And my job at that point, uh, my job at that point was just like it had been all year was really, and this would allow me personally to have the success that I had as a senior uh, was really focused on the details, not think about the big picture and, and really, you know, that one foot in front of the other, you know, breaking that down, and from a simplification perspective and, you know, thinking about the way that I call the play in the huddle, thinking about, 
uh, how my guys were in the huddle and, and getting their attention brought in to the play, uh, getting the guys on the line of scrimmage and making sure everybody's lined up correctly. Uh, thinking about the way that my cadence sounded and, and the, the cadence within my cadence. And then thinking about my drops, as simple as that, thinking about my pre-snap and my post-snap reads, my footwork and how many you know steps it takes to throw this route on this side, the same play call concept on the opposite side. Like that's how simplified I kept it all year long. I worked on those and details were extremely important as they, as they always should be in sport. But that's, that was that play too. That was break the huddle, make sure, make sure the play's called correctly. You know, and you call the play correctly. Typically if you have a guy that's like, huh, you know, (laughs) right. So you, Make sure everybody understands what's going on, which we typically did. I mean, we were a bunch of pretty savvy, like I shared with you, our, our offensive line and, and core receivers and running backs, a bunch of smart dudes. Break the huddle and get those guys out there quick. And then they run out there and they're like on the line of scrimmage. We got two guys on the line of scrimmage. So, I'm, you know, and my offensive line is like rare and ready to go. Right. And I've got two guys that are kind of fiddling around the line of scrimmage and, and, uh, Rab's on and leg is supposed to get back. So I got to wait for him. I'm, I'm like almost up under set and I'm like, you know, get off the line. And we get set, set hut, take my steps and make sure, you know, my ball handling is clean. And for me on that call, it was, you know, the ball's getting handed off behind my back. So um, getting handed off behind my back, like this guy. <laughs> there we do. That's awesome. <laughs> Making sure that I'm holding on to the ball until I feel he grab it. So, um, you know, and, and his job, he did a great job of selling it, like watching the receivers and then come back and grabbing the ball. Typically, it's quarterback seating the ball, putting it in the pocket of the running back, and he's up, you know, with his eyes up. So and then if you watch that play, I, I get the ball taken from me, and I continue on my drop, and I'm like, yes, we got it. But – my foot misses his foot by about this much as we're dropping. Oh. <laughs> oh, it makes me firm every time I see it. Like, oh shit, am I gonna trip him this time? Like, and he fall. You know, that's that's like a nightmare. But uh, fortunately, it was. You know, I think it's the best play in sports history. But uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I remember. I got to tell you, man, you're making my like my heart rate and anxiety is like I, I feel like I'm back in that moment with you guys in overtime against Oklahoma. Um, you know, my like my heart's beating a million miles an hour. It's like and it, I like what you said, though, about the one foot in front of the other approach in terms of breaking it down as opposed to thinking ahead. Like, is this going to go in? Just OK, we just broke the huddle. I need to call the play correctly. Make sure everyone's set. Um, I, I kind of love that uh, that meticulous uh methodical approach that you took did you did you ever question coach like hey i don't know if we should do this or it was like no i i i'm with it on the fourth and six uh halfback pass I, I, he's we're on the sideline and he's like halfback pass i'm like are you crazy i mean that's, i'm thinking like i'm a fifth year senior if we're gonna throw the ball let me throw the ball like giving it and Ton of ton of confidence in Vinny to throw it, but you know, thank goodness. I think Vinny was um, just inexperienced enough and had enough, like, dude, brass man, like, had enough. Just, oh, I'm gonna do this. You know, Vincenzo, like, give it the ball. That he didn't see the the big, like, it's fourth and six. <laughs> you know, this is final play of the game. Could be, um, and he just you know, spins a perfect ball to the back of the end zone, puts it out there. We sell it just enough. And so on that play, we're on the sideline. I'm like, what are we doing? And then I told him after that, like, I'll, I would never question you again. Uh, but on the, on the two point conversion on statue, absolutely not. Like we all knew what we had. We had, we had gold, man. I mean, it was, that play was, uh, we knew it was going to work. What was that moment like for you after Ian Johnson runs it in, you guys win the ball game? Do you remember that exact moment? 
Yeah, pandemonium, man. It was it was it was chaos on the field. Our team running rushing the field. Um, I remember, you know, Taylor Tharp coming in off the sideline, and he and I are like just excited, jumping up and down. Uh, rest of the team, like you know, dog piles here and there, and everybody's just going crazy, running around the field. I mean, it was it was chaos. It was it was uh, uh, total elation, like the highest of highs that. Uh, that you can fill in sport. I think that's probably the, the the greatest play in college football history. I remember watching that game as a kid and I, I got faked out. You know, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and then I saw, you know, in the, I think it was the bottom left corner. You see Ian Johnson running. I'm like, Oh my God. Like, and then obviously we, they slowed it down for you a couple of times. And I'm like, that is, that's freaking rad. It was, it was pretty cool. And in the moment that, the size of that moment, you know, where we were considered, you know, it was this, this storyline and theme was the David versus Goliath theme. And they, you know, that would have been the placation all, all week long. And no one really gave us a shot. I mean, outside of, uh, outside of our locker room, no one truly believed that we could win that football game, but that was, that was the really unique thing about that team is, uh, we got to a place where we didn't care what anybody else thought. And, and the only thing that was important and was most important is what that locker room truly believed. And we had a hundred guys that believed, uh, believed in each other and themselves. And that's a pretty powerful thing. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, so, so many great memories.